What are you doing? Preparing the rubbish bin. This is the lid and the hinge broke off. That's what it's meant to look like. And I'm making it look like that on this side. How long have we had that bin? Uh, at least five, six years. And it was a hand-me-down? It was second hand, yeah. <laughs> Do you think maybe it's just given up? Nah. I'll fix this and then we'll be right back onto the wall. All right, let's see if it works. I won't get too close, that bin's disgusting. That's what bins are for, right? Here we go. That's good. Oh, the pedal broke. Oh, good. Should we just build a new kitchen? <laughs> You struggling there, Jess? Are you filming? Maybe. Oh man. Oh, okay, there you go. If you've ever had these Cheer Sisters drinks, they are so yum and they are impossible to open. Well, hurt you, my hand. You, you just opened it. It was very hard. <laughs> I have given up before. <laughs> okay, so the plan this week. Jess just brought me back a coffee and a cookie. How nice is that? Um, the plan this week. We've got the electrician tomorrow. He's gonna to put in the flush boxes and stuff like that in the walls. He might drill for the lights, but usually it's a better idea to leave the light holes until the plaster is completed. Otherwise, it's another obstacle for them. Anyway, he's coming tomorrow and we're all aiming towards the final inspection for this room, the final pre-line inspection. Because of the way we're doing the walls, we need three inspections. We've done two. This is the last one. Now, I, this is a self-inflicted wound because I insisted on doing the surface cavity exterior wall. We'll start doing that in a second and I can explain the benefits of it. These boards have uh, these boards have been in here for the last couple of weeks. And that's very deliberate because around this time of year, it can be very difficult to pass these pre-line inspections because as part of them, 
they check the moisture content of the timber before you're allowed to line the plasterboard. So the main point of the inspection is to make sure the wall's okay for plasterboard and the moisture of the timber has to be no higher than 17%, maybe 18%, I think they changed it. Having the timber, having any timber, whether it's floorboards or interior lining, having any timber in the room and allowing it to acclimatize is always a good idea. So this stuff here, I reckon it will be around about 6% moisture content now, which is crazy dry. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. So prior to getting the all clear, to put the plasterboard on, we also need to seal all the windows in the room. But before we do that, let's explain the service cavity. So I want to illustrate how the service cavity works, what the sort of intention behind it is. Basically, the conventional House frame here in New Zealand is a 90 mil stud like that. And you put your weatherboards on the outside. With a bit of building paper as well, but we don't need that for this. And then you have your plasterboard attached directly to your stud like so. Now the issue with this, the reason I am doing a different system is because the cold, all the cold or all the heat that hits your weatherboards from the outside transfers directly through the stud that it's pressed up against and into your plasterboard that's called thermal bridging you do insulate in between, you insulate here but everywhere where there is a stud or a nog on your frame you are getting that thermal bridging which reduces the thermal performance of your wall so what we're doing is we're getting battens like so you can then put your jib like that, your plasterboard and you do have thermal bridging still it could pass through there, but you have a lot less. It's only on these junctions here where the timbers cross one another. So that's a huge benefit. And on top of that benefit, you also have a space here where you can add more insulation. We're getting R1.8 inside the frame here. I'll pop the Imperial equivalent there. And then we're getting an additional R1.2 in this little void here. So we're getting R3. And all we lose is a little bit of space 45 mil thick batten and quite a bit of time but hey I'm doing it so it's okay oh look at this looks like we won't be running as many leads everything all good Amanda? Yeah, good. you up there? Yeah. cool speaking of electrical Actually, maybe people can help. I bought this from the op shop the other day. Yeah. 
and I don't think it was cheap, it was $75. It's super cool, super retro, 1960s, made in Holland. The problem is, it's an infra, infrared, I don't actually know if it is infrared, but when you turn it on, it's, Whoa. it's heated. It produces a lot of heat. Yeah. And that's the point. This guy has a, has a very sore back. This guy has a sore knee. I don't want it for that. I just like the look of it. It's really 60s and I want to replace it with a regular bulb. However, I'm not going to pull it out now because it's too hard to put back. It has three prongs. So, where, where, no one has three prongs. Yeah, it's either screw or um, two prongs. What do you call the one with the prongs? Is it a bayonet? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a bayonet, but it's got three prongs and they're like perfectly spaced. So like one, two, three, kind of like a star. And I cannot find a three prong light bulb anywhere. <laughs> I have even emailed Philips, but I don't think they're going to get back to me. I think probably their obligation to their customers has a, you know, like a 20 to 40 year. It's lit. I'm pretty sure this is from the 60s. couldn't wait. Last night I sealed all around this window because we had these cold drafts just coming straight through the gap. It's quite a cold week this week. A funny noise. Let it dry and then you can cut it off. One of the things I like about carpentry, one thing I appreciate is you kind of, you get to learn how houses work. If you don't know much about building, you could be in a house and not really understand why you can't keep it warm. But if the windows aren't sealed properly, if there isn't enough insulation, if you have that thermal bridging happening. My point is, building teaches you a lot about the homes we live in. And the funny thing is, I, I learned a lot of this stuff only in the last five years. A lot of the more um, high performance housing techniques. For example, the service cavity idea in this video, this is the first time I've done that on a job. And it's my house. So that's what another thing I've appreciated about renovating my own house is that I can try all these things out. And then when I go to renovate someone else's house in the future, I've tested it, right? Found little things, found little improvements, and I can implement it on those jobs and make those jobs better. You're always learning. This is my 20th year as a builder, and I'm still learning. What's that? The phone. Well, I cut it with a knife. Oh. Speaking of phone. Do you feel like being a phone king? Phone queen? Sorry. This was a bad idea. Don't help. It's fine. I've got a very important task of filming. <laughs> I would um, change your jersey. If that phone gets on that jersey, you'll be very upset. I'm quite fond of this jersey. Five dollar op shop find, 100% wool. So up here, oh, oh shit. <laughs> Thank you. 
professional. Thank you. I knew you were the foam queen. So this company, Terralana, they make to measure as well. So you can avoid avoid this, but with that my renovation, every spacing is different. Just to suit the wall and the way we're gonna line it. So we have to cut everything individually. You're cutting it like a yule log. A what? A dessert? Oh yeah. So you have the flat sponge, you cover it in chocolate and cream and then you roll it up. Oh. I love that you can connect almost anything to food. <laughs> it's a special ability. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always thinking about food. Let's see if it works. Your ability is to connect anything to an episode of Seinfeld or a 90s hip hop song. <laughs> Thank you, I feel so seen. <laughs> <laughs> this gets us to R3, where we would have otherwise been at R1.8. Because another thing to consider is when you're retrofitting, putting your insulation in the wall from the inside rather than the outside, you have to allow a bit of vent space. So you can't have the full depth of the wall frame insulated. So you lose a bit of R value there. So we've got 70 mil inside the wall frame, just so the weatherboards aren't compressed completely with insulation. So yeah, the fact that we have R3 is great. It's above building code. I think building code at the moment is R2 on the walls. So yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy. So since you said that, I've been thinking, how can I relate this to a Seinfeld episode? Thank you. Hmm. You got one? I got nothing. I don't think there was an episode where Jerry renovated his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like more of a George thing. Yeah. <laughs> or a Kramer thing. I'm renovating Jerry, I'm renovating. <laughs> Yeah, no, that'd be a Kramer move, for sure. Yeah! Oh, levels. Levels, Jerry. I'm building levels. Because yeah, there you go. Okay. And he, put, he builds, like... This is my life. He does this all the time. Always a good idea to take photos of the wall uh, before you cover it up. And then you know where not to screw and where to screw. So this is what gives a service cavity its name, is you have your services within the cavity. So in this case we've got electrical. It was going to be plumbing because there was going to be a sink here, but I talked to the plumber and it made a lot more sense to have the plumbing within the cabinet on the outside of the wall because there's joists and everything on the wall side of the plasterboard, so that makes it a lot easier and if there's ever a leak you don't have to rip your wall apart, right? So yeah, just electrical. Well, that's all the timber on and um, we just have to put another layer of insulation. I also cancelled the inspection. No inspection in this episode. We're almost there, just a bit more insulation. Uh, but there's things on the outside that I haven't done and on the pre-line inspection checklist it says building envelope complete. So when they're doing an inspection of an area, that cladding has to be 100%. Ray will be back next week to give me a hand. We'll smash that out and early next week we'll be ready to pass the board in here. I'll see you in the next exciting episode. Oh. <laughs> Midwinter. Short days, low energy. I'll see you in the next exciting episode. Isn't that also a 90s hip hop reference? Yeah, Dr. And Dre and Snoop Dogg. Yeah, I thought so. I don't think they're so exciting, That's though. That's where you got it from, isn't it? No.
Bye. <laughs> Thank you.